about a withered hand, a withered hand. If you look up the book of Mark chapter three, Jesus came into the synagogue or the church and he was teaching there. And the Bible says it was a man sitting way in the back that was quiet and he wanted to keep quiet in the back. He didn't want to make any noise. He just wanted to hear what the Savior was saying. And then Jesus called him out. Did you know when you are in a big room, Jesus sees you? Jesus sees all of your hurts. Jesus sees all your needs. And he had a withered hand. I can imagine it was embarrassing to have a withered hand. I can imagine his withered hand kept him from working. Perhaps it was his right hand. The hand that allows you to be able to make income. The hand that allows you to be able to shake somebody else's hand and to greet them. And the man had a withered hand. So the Pharisees was looking around and seeing what Jesus was going to do because it was on the Sabbath. So Jesus told that man with the withered hand to step up and come forward. <laughs> you know how it is. See, I don't know how about y'all. You know, if you're in a traditional Baptist church and then that pastor calls you forward and he said, hey, step forward. You just start getting embarrassed. And what you want to do, you want to run out the back like, hey, I'm out of here. But this man had courage and he stepped forward and Jesus knew about this man. He knew about this man issue with this withered hand and the withered hand, man, is something that you could not fix back in the day. So you know what Jesus told him to do? He told him to stretch out his hand. And do you know what kind of faith that was required? That man had to take his hand out of his coat. He had to unwrap it and he had to do something that was embarrassing. He had to stretch his hand out so everybody can see it. And I can imagine this man was wondering, what if this doesn't work? What if this makes me the laughing stock of everybody in the synagogue? But nevertheless, the man did something unusual, something out of the ordinary. He stretched out his hand. And the Bible says at that moment, his hand became well. His hand became just like the other hand. His hand became new. And everybody saw it. The Pharisees saw it. But instead of the Pharisees being happy, you know you're going to have haters when you start getting blessed. Ooh, come on, let's with that. Once you start getting blessed, guess what? The haters are going to come. And the Bible says that his hand was made well. And the Pharisees, instead of rejoicing with Jesus, rejoicing and seeing this miracle, you know what they did? They said, how in the world can you heal on the Sabbath? See, they were not concerned about Jesus' miracles and he was a son of God. They were so caught up and tied up in religious rules. They said that, why are you doing this on the Sabbath? And Jesus said, well, what good is it to have the Sabbath? The Sabbath was not for man to observe. The Sabbath came so men can enjoy. I'm going to repeat that. The Sabbath was not made for men to have all these religious rules. The Sabbath was made for man to enjoy. And Jesus himself said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath means rest. The Sabbath means to relax. The Sabbath is a time for healing. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 3 that the Pharisees were so upset that they went out and plotted how could they kill Jesus. They said, Dr. Joe, what's the moral to the message? What's the, what are you trying to get over? I'm trying to get over to you that everybody has a withered hand. So your withered hand may be addiction to alcohol. Your withered hand may be an addiction to pornography. Your withered hand may be an addiction to money. Your withered hand may be addiction to the strip club. Your withered hand may be addiction to, you know, your career. And you don't see it. And anytime you don't acknowledge what's withered in your life, it can cause other parts to dis-ease. Notice I said dis-ease. That means come out of comfort. And Jesus wanted to bring attention to everything that we are withering in. 
because whatever we're not willing to expose, we're not willing to allow it to be healed. I'm going to repeat that Holy Spirit. Whatever, beloved, that you're not willing to expose, you're not willing to allow it to be healed. See, if this man wouldn't have stepped forward, if this man would have kept his hand wrapped up and tied up, despite what Jesus, who the word of God said, he would not have received his healing. So I have a question for you today. What are you trying to conceal? Because whatever you're trying to conceal, it can't heal. And God is not going to unwrap it for you. Notice that Jesus didn't go and grab that man from the back and start unwrapping his bandages and pulled his hand forward. No, he didn't do that. He just spoke the word. And see, for us, in order for us to be healed in our withered places, we have to trust the word of God over it. Just like the man with the withered hand had to do. And I can imagine the people around him said that, hey, you know what? It's not going to work. It's not worth it. It's not worth the embarrassment. It's not worth the shame because everything we have in our lives that are withering, we are embarrassed and we are ashamed of. And guess what? Let me tell you this. Before you start looking down your nose at somebody else, before you start judging everybody else, we all have something wither in our lives. It may not be as big as some other people's issues, but we all have withering issues. And in order to have that withering issue dealt with, we have to expose it. Just imagine, anybody know how to grow plants, right? How many plants can grow in the darkness? See, Lisa, no plants can grow in the darkness. You know why? It's because the plant needs sunlight to grow. And if it doesn't have sunlight, guess what's going to happen? It's going to wither. You know what the sunlight does? The sunlight allows something to happen inside the plant called photosynthesis. Yeah, I'm taking you back to uh, biology. And, and when you have that sunlight in photosynthesis, what happens is that plant is able to convert carbon dioxide, okay, and use it for fuel to release oxygen. And when that oxygen is released, guess what? That oxygen helps all living creatures all over the earth. That's why we don't need to cut down all these trees. I'm just saying. And we need to have plants around us because plants around us gives us oxygen, which gives us life. But if that plant does not get the proper sunlight, if that plant stays concealed, it can't grow and it cannot produce the thing that God has created it for. Likewise with us, if we don't get around the sunlight, and I'm not just talking about the S-U-N, I'm talking about the S-O-N, come on Holy Spirit, if we don't spend time in the Word of God, if we don't spend time in prayer, guess what, man, we're going to wither, we're going to wither, and our mind, our body is going to be just like that man's hands. But when that man's hands was exposed to the sun, the S-O-N, guess what happened? It became new. See, every time we get exposed to Jesus and his word daily, we become new. And those things that are withering in our lives, guess what? It becomes new. It becomes strong. And we are able to receive the miracle that we need. How many guys need a miracle right now? You have something withering in your life, just like this man with the withered hand, and it's preventing you from working. It's preventing you from being able to live the life that God has called you and I to live. Well, let me tell you, man, you have to expose it to the sun. You have to expose it to God. You have to tell God, God, I have this issue in my marriage. I cannot fix it. God, I have this issue with my spouse. I cannot fix him or her. God, I have this issue in my finances. I cannot fix it. Lord, I have an issue with my eyes and looking at the wrong thing or listening to the wrong thing. I cannot fix it. But I know you can. So I'm going to expose this to you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to open. Do you know the reason why David was called a man after God's own heart? Even of all the crazy stuff David did from adultery to murder, all those other kind of things. It's because David always exposed his heart to God. He poured out his God, heart to God daily. You know, if it wasn't right then, over a period of time, David said, God, okay, this is what I did. 
Lord, you got to help me in this. That's what the whole, the book of Psalms is about David. And David prayers and his lamenting about all the things that he was doing and what he did. But guess what he did? He trusted in God. And he prophetically saw Jesus Christ come through. And now we don't have to prophetically see Jesus Christ come through. Jesus Christ came through for us. So we just have to lean and depend on him like the people in the old Baptist church would say. You have to understand how to lean and depend on the Lord. He's our leaning post. Do you know what that word means, leaning post? That means it's a post that's stable. It's a post that's strong. It's a post that's bedrocked. So when you lean on it, it won't move. And guess what it will do? It will hold you up. It will hold you up. Up So whatever in your life that you feel like is weak and withering, lean on a leaning post. And the leaning post is Jesus Christ. He will help us in our time of need. And Jesus is still doing miracles today. Don't let nobody fool you just because you haven't heard of a miracle. You haven't experienced a miracle. Jesus right now is still alive. He's in us and he's still doing miracles today. And maybe today you need a miracle in that area that's withering. I just want to pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, everybody can hear me and see me right now all over the world. They need a miracle in their, in their minds. They need a miracle in their finances. They need a miracle in their body. Lord, do it for them. Let them lean and depend on your word. No matter what is happening in their lives, let them lean and depend on you. And there may be areas in their lives that are withering, but you said that you came to give us life and life more abundantly to the full, till it overflows so we can be a blessing to somebody else. In Jesus' name. Love y'all. Hope you got something out of this message about a withering hand. In Jesus' name.